Hello, and welcome to Western's Virtual Fall Preview Day. My name is Andrea Legato. I am the Coordinator of Student Services and Undergraduate Programs here in the School of Health Studies in the Faculty of Health Sciences at Western. I'd like to welcome all of our prospective students and parents um, who are joining us today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do here in the School of Health Studies um, and what you can expect to experience during your time in the Bachelor of Health Sciences program. So we get a lot of questions about what do we mean by health sciences? We have a few different programs at Western that are kind of similarly titled. We'll get to that in a bit more detail in a minute. But when we talk about health sciences at Western, we are talking largely about the social and personal determinants of health. We are talking about well-being. We're talking about things like health policy, healthcare law, and we're really talking about health across the entire lifespan. So we are looking at health from birth until death from a 360 degree perspective. So that means we aren't just looking at health within the human body. We are also looking at the systems and structures that are in place, the policy that surrounds health, um, health administration, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that we are really getting a full view of health and the world of health. Probably the most popular question we get when we are meeting with students, when we are able to meet in person um, at events like the Ontario University's Fair is what's the difference at Western you offer programs in health sciences, in science, in medical science? What's the difference between those three? So we like to explain that right from the beginning of our presentations. So in the health sciences program, which we're talking about today, so the Bachelor of Health Sciences, we are an interdisciplinary study of health and wellness within the context of our society and a variety of other global um, settings and cultures. So we are looking at health, as I said already, from a 360 degree perspective, and we're looking at it from an interdisciplinary perspective. What that means is that each of our professors comes from their own academic background and discipline, and they look at health through their unique lens. In a Bachelor of Science, you're going to be exploring a diversity of organisms and the complex relationships that exist. And that can be um, in the human body, in nature, in plants, in animals. And in medical science, you are looking at the human body on a molecular level. So you're looking at cells and genetics. Um, you would study things like physiology, pharmacology, um, immunology, potentially. So you are looking at the human body through the lens of the natural sciences. So if you were to come to our program next year, Here's a little bit of what you could expect in terms of the structure of your first year. So we accept approximately 325 first year students into our program each fall. Um, and they take 1.5 health sciences credits. So that's personal determinants of health, social determinants of health, and resilience and well-being. They take 1.0 credits in biology, so you take a biology course in the fall and another in the winter. And then you have 2.5 elective courses that you get to select from across campus, and you can mix and match those across faculties. We like to give our students as many elective credits as possible because we think first year is a really exciting time to be able to try on a variety of programs for size, to see what works for you, to explore at the university level. Subjects in university, <clears throat> excuse me, are very different than they are at the high school level. So you may have taken something in high school and you weren't sure if it was your favorite. You may take the same subject in university and find that it takes a different approach to that subject area and you're really pumped about it. So we really want students in first year to have the opportunity to try a variety of different courses. And once you get into your upper years, you do have the opportunity to mix and match 
programs, modules, so things like majors and minors across faculties. What you take in first year is going to determine what you're eligible to do in your upper year. So we really encourage you to um, try out new things, expand your horizons, and take courses that excite you. Just to give you some idea of what you might expect in your first year professors, Shauna Burke comes to us with a kinesiology background. So remember I said each of our professors is going to come from a different discipline and they're going to look at health through that particular lens. So Shauna's research primarily deals with issues like childhood obesity, infant and youth health, um, health promotion, and, and physical activity in children and adults. She teaches our first year course in personal determinants of health. So personal determinants of health are the choices that you as an individual can make to improve your health outcomes. So things like um, eating a healthy diet, choosing not to smoke, choosing to engage in daily exercise. Those are the personal determinants of health. In your second term, you will take the social determinants of health. You may take it with Jessica Polzer, who's one of our faculty members who teaches this course. Jessica comes from a um, anthropology and women's studies background. And in the social determinants of health, you're going to be looking at the social, structural, societal factors that are at play that can lead to greater or worse health outcomes. This is something that we're seeing a lot right now during COVID, right? We know that there are certain populations who are disproportionately affected by COVID. That is an illustration of the social determinants of health, and that's the kind of thing you'd be learning in this first year class. Now, students, of course, also want to know, what does it look like after my first year? So at the end of your first year, um, you will go through a process called Intent to Register, and we'll help you with that, where you will select your module for your upper year, upper years. Um, modules are what we at Western call things like honor specializations, majors, and minors. So it's your program of study. And there are multiple ways that you can um, combine modules across faculties here at Western, and there are multiple modules to choose from here within the School of Health Studies. So for our honor specializations, which are you know, four-year programs, you have honor specializations in health sciences, health sciences with biology, health promotion, rehabilitation sciences, and health and aging. We also have a specialization in health sciences, so that's a non-honors four-year degree. You can do a major in health sciences or a major in rehabilitation sciences. You can also combine majors, minor specializations, and honor specializations across faculties. So if in your first year you take those required health sciences and biology courses and you take psychology as one of your electives and you find that you're really engaged in that psychology material, you may in second year want to enroll in an honor specialization in health sciences with a minor in psychology. So you're really able to tailor make your degree to your own interests and goals. We also offer a combined dual degree with the Ivy School of Business. That's a five-year program. And at the end of those five years, you graduate with two degrees, an Honors Bachelor of Health Sciences and an Honors Business Administration degree. So what will those upper years look like? What will you study? In year two, our program is fairly prescribed. So students are taking a set of core courses in things like health promotion, health issues in aging, childhood and adolescent health, anatomy, and health ethics. Once you get to third and fourth year, you generally get to have quite a bit of choice in the courses that you select within your health sciences module. So you will take health policy, um, that's a required course, and you will take a health statistics course. But beyond that, it becomes very broad in terms of what you may wish to take. So you could take things like sexuality, gender, and health, global health promotion, social media and health, 
um, or you might go the more kind of scientific route and take courses in advanced anatomy or human embryology. We also offer courses in health innovation and leadership. And we offer independent study and practicum options as well for students who want to get more hands-on experience either in research or in a professional work setting. So I talked a little bit about the interdisciplinarity of our program, and I think that this slide just really helps illustrate that quite nicely so that you get a sense of the breadth of academic backgrounds that our professors are coming from and how that really is able to give you as a student the opportunity to understand health from a variety of different perspectives and to understand how those perspectives intersect with one another. So you may take courses from Dr. Louis Charlin. His research interests are in mental health, addiction, and healthcare ethics. He's consulted broadly across the world with governments on uh, medical assistance in dying, so right to die legislation. You may take courses from Louis in things like um, mental health. Trina Orchard is an anthropologist and a lot of her research focuses on marginalized populations, including indigenous populations and sex workers. So some of Trina's research has focused on mapping where sex workers live their lives professionally versus personally. And Trina has worked with local social agencies to help ensure that their services are well located for those women um, so that they make sense in terms of where those women are living their lives. And then our third example on this slide is Dr. Alex Zesevich. Alex focuses on aging, she is an award-winning professor, incredibly innovative in the classroom. You'll never meet anyone with more enthusiasm about the subject matter that she's teaching, more energy. Um, she teaches courses in gerontology and practice, which is a community-engaged learning course where students have the opportunity to work on real-life projects with community partners. She also pioneered our um, Lessons in Aging, um, Lessons from Scandinavia in Aging course, which is a travel course. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes, um, but this gives you some idea of kind of the breadth of what you might experience in our course and the different kinds of individuals that you might be learning from. What I think is really exciting about our professors and what you can see actually in all three of these examples is that the work they do is incredibly important because it is being applied in a variety of different settings. It's very much like real world work that they're doing. It's impactful, it's meaningful, they have connections in our community. Um, so I think it's a really exciting group of people to learn from. I mentioned a couple of slides ago that we also offer experiential learning opportunities through practicum and independent study courses. Practicum courses are open to fourth year honors students to apply to, and these are practical placements in professional settings. So some examples could be hospitals and long-term care facilities, not-for-profit organizations, the health unit, et cetera, et cetera. So these are opportunities for students to gain real kind of on-the-job experience based on their interests. We also offer an independent study option to that same group of students. So students in their fourth year in an honors program can apply for independent study where they will work directly with a faculty supervisor on a specific research project. So if you are considering a research focused graduate program, if you're thinking you're going to go on to do a master's or maybe a PhD as well. This is a great opportunity to get some research experience and to try it on for size and to see if that is indeed what you want to do when you're done your undergrad degree. We also offer our Aging Globally course, Lessons from Scandinavia. So this launched a few years ago now. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to travel in 2020, but we're hoping to be able to get it off the ground again soon. Um, in this course, students are in the classroom from January till April. They are learning about healthcare systems that are in place for aging populations in Scandinavia, so specifically in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. 
and they are even working with partners in Scandinavia um, while they're in the classroom here in Canada. Then in early May, um, they have the opportunity to travel to those three countries and to see all the lessons they've learned in the classroom brought to life. They get to meet those partners they've been working with for the last several months and to see for themselves um, how Scandinavia has been so, success so successful in terms of how they manage the health of their aging populations. Um, and then students then have the opportunity to reflect and compare and contrast how those systems work in Scandinavia and what lessons we can bring back to Canada. So I know parents are always interested in students too, um, about what is my kid gonna do with this degree after they graduate? Now, this program isn't leading to one specific career. It is leading to a whole breadth of options. So of course we have students going into kind of traditionally medically oriented professional programs like medicine, dentistry, nursing school. We have a high number of students who go into professional programs like physical, occupational, and speech language therapy. And we have students who take paths into law, education, chiropractic college. We also have a number of students who go into research and course-based masters in things like international and global health, public health, which has really been um, highlighted recently during COVID. We have a much stronger understanding of what that means and what public health professionals do. Um, we have students who go into programs in environment and sustainability, in anatomy, in health and rehabilitation sciences, and health promotion. There's a huge number of options available to these students, and it's really up to them based on how they tailor their undergraduate program, what interests they uncover, and their individual career goals as to where this degree takes them, but it has a huge number of options available. And of course, we have students who go directly into the work world after graduation as well. And that could be in health-oriented NGOs, places like the World Health Organization. We have students working in their local LINs, in public health units, students who go the occupational health and safety route, or perhaps health admin hospital administration, or even health entrepreneurship. Right now in Canada, as you're probably aware, um, there's this tremendous demographic shift happening where we are seeing um, the number of um, Canadians who are senior citizens increasing to a really, really high level. And what that means is that the demand in the healthcare field is growing exponentially and will continue to grow for quite a long time. So um, we are preparing our students to be able to be nimble, um, to be able to go into a variety of different roles within the world of health and to have a really strong understanding of health, of health policy, of health structures and systems so that they are able to make change in those areas as well. And so that they are prepared um, to be innovative thinkers in that area, to be problem solvers and to fill roles that currently don't exist, but will in the near future as well. Now, one story I like to share is about Samia Krishna, who graduated from our program in 2013. Samia graduated as a Rhodes Scholar, which is the most prestigious scholarship available to students graduating from an undergraduate program globally. So, of course, we were incredibly proud of Samia for that. That is not actually the reason, though, that I like to share Samia's story. What I find most interesting about Samia is her path to her degree. And I think it illustrates a picture that we see frequently among our students. So you can see if you look at Samia's first year here that she came in and she was on that medical school track. And so are a lot of students who come into our first year. So she was taking calculus, biology, our first year health side courses. She took physics, um, took, you know, chemistry and then micro and macro econ looked like her electives that year. 
In second year, she's still on that path. She's taking interme intermediate econ. She's taking organic chem. She's taking biochem and molecular bio. And then you also she see she's taking several of our core courses in health sciences, like health issues and aging, uh, research me methods in health sciences, et cetera. Then in third year, things really change, right? She's taking accounting and business analysis, introduction to sociology, that's new, survey of sociological theory, women in health, health policy, health promotion. And then in fourth year, we see that whole transition really realized where she, we don't see any of the kind of typical medical school track courses that we expect, right? We don't see any chemistry, we don't see any advanced biology, um, but we do see things like quantitative research, foundation of feminist thought, culture of leadership, investigating the social world. And what we see here is a wholesale shift in what Samia's goals are. So Samia was an outstanding student, obviously. She graduated with the Rhodes Scholarship. She could have gone on to any graduate or professional program she wanted, including medical school. But something happened in her third year where she realized that really her interests lied in um, global health, women's health, and that health promotion piece and health policy, that global health piece. And that's really where she directed her last two years of study. Uh, Sami is now working as a consultant with McKinsey & Co. And I share this um, not because I think it's instructive to follow one individual's uh, path, but because I think we see this a lot where students come in, they're thinking medicine, they're thinking dentistry, and of course those are great paths. But through our program, they get exposed to a wealth of other opportunities that exist within the world of health. And maybe they decide that some of those are a better fit for their personalities and their goals um, than what they originally thought. And so we really encourage students to come into our program with an open mind through our subject matter that we cover, as well as through our faculty, through the work that our faculty do in the community, through their research, our students are going to be exposed to a whole host of options that they may not have previously known existed. And I think that is one of the most exciting things about this program, um, because it is preparing you for such a diversity of opportunities in terms of your career. If you still wanna go that medical, dental school, nursing school route, that is absolutely open to you. But while you're here, if something else piques your interest, then you have the opportunity to follow that through as well um, and to, you know, design a career based on those interests. So in terms of the details of admissions, <clears throat> excuse me, we are looking at your top six grade 12 or you. 12U credits, including 12U English and Biology, and one of the 12U Maths. So it doesn't matter to us which math you take, we just need one of them. Um, and if you take all of the maths or two of the maths, and they aren't all in your top six, we would only count one of them in your top six um, for your admissions average. If you are thinking that you would like to pursue medicine or dentistry, we also recommend that you take grade 12 U chemistry. It's not required. It won't be counted in your admissions average if it's not one of your top six, but it is a prerequisite for first year chemistry courses, which you would need to take. In terms of how you apply, you're going to be applying through the Ontario University's Application Center. You should have already received all of this information from your guidance counselor. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you know the programs that you're applying to. Today is your opportunity to check out the different programs at Western to understand differences like we talked about between Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Health Science, Bachelor of Medical Science, and to ensure that you're applying to the right program for your strengths and your interests. So you will log into ouac.on.ca to register, or rather to apply. For $150, you get three initial program choices, and then it's $50 per additional program choice. The deadline this year is January 15th, 2021. We do offer a variety of automatic 
entrance scholarships and bursaries. So we have admissions, automatic admissions scholarships that start at the 90% point and go up from there. And then admissions bursaries are based on financial need rather than academics. And the, that application is available through the registrar's office website. So that's registrar.uwo.ca. You'd be able to find that application. The scholarships listed on those slide, this slide though would be um, assessed automatically. There's no application required for those. We do also offer our national scholarship program that does require an application. It is due February 14th, so we always make it due on Valentine's Day because what is more romantic than submitting a scholarship application, right? Um, these are awarded on the basis of outstanding academic performance, demonstrated creativity and innovative thought, passion for the pursuit of learning, and just exceptional achievement in extracurricular activities, community service, volunteerism, et cetera. And those awards range from $30,000 to $65,000 over four years. It requires a nomination by your principal. So if you think that you would qualify for this, um, please take a look at the applications on the registrar's website um, and get going on that so that you can apply by February. Another program that's available by application is our Scholars Electives Program. This is an enrichment program for high achieving students. So students coming in with a 90% plus average are eligible to apply for Scholars Electives. It's a program that's designed for high achieving students who are interested in additional academic enrichment. And that's through an interdisciplinary approach to undergraduate learning. In first year, students and scholars electives take an additional half credit course together. Um, and then in their upper years, they have the opportunity to work with faculty researchers. So you get a bit of a grad school experience as an undergrad student. Um, you also have the opportunity to custom make your own module. So if you are really interested in health sciences, but you also have a really strong interest in neuroscience and you'd like to combine those, you have the opportunity to work with myself or academic counseling staff, our associate deans, to create your own module based on your interests. We have a couple of our former scholars elected students listed on the slide so you get an idea of what their experience is like and the kinds of projects that they engaged in. So Gabrielle Foss, was involved in a project on capacity building of older adults in independent living, i.e. what can we do to allow aging adults to live independently longer? And then Alex Wolf, who's since gone on to med school, um, worked on a project on homelessness, poverty, and social inclusion. Other opportunities for scholars, elective students just include um, kind of a, a community of their own. There's an opportunity to live in a scholars elective floor on residence um, and just a number of, of social and learning opportunities that can be gained through that program. It does require an application. So if you're interested in that, um, you can find that information on the welcome.uwo.ca site. So questions and answers. We do have chat available and running all day today. So if you have questions, please direct those to the chat. There's also some contact info here if you'd like to reach out to us after today. If you have some questions that pop into your brain um, tomorrow or later in the week, we'd still be happy to answer those through a variety of channels. Um, if you have specific questions about admissions, if you're wondering how your IB or AP credits, for example, will work in the admissions process, then I would invite you to direct those to the admissions officers who will be available to chat to you today through the registrar's office. Thank you so much for attending our presentation today. I encourage you to send any questions our way, either through the chat or through email. We're happy to answer those. I wish you all the best of luck as you discover Western today, and we hope to see a lot of you here in September. Take care.